If anybody knows what the name of this particular knit pattern is, please let me know in the comments. And then they worked with a friend to painstakingly recreate the exact pattern. Here it is all worked up, been given permission to share with everybody out there watching this. It is from 1971. It cost me $4, that one. Very cute. I'm happy to report that I got a lot of work done. I now have four crazy quilted stockings. That was an interesting limitation that I found myself chafing against a little bit. I'll show you some of the new stitches that I did or made up here and I think they look quite nice. I do foresee a potential issue. These are two very, very different colors. We've got the dark blue over here. We've got the light. I did notice, uh, much to my chagrin, that the blue did bleed a fair amount. Hello friends, and welcome back to the final and very late Vlogmas wrap up episode for this year. As many of you have noted in the comment section across my channel this past month, it is quite late and that's simply due to a combination of factors, which I'll get into a little bit later. But now I'm here and ready to go. So let's pick back up with where we left off in the last episode. And that was Dayton, Ohio in the cutest little bookshop that was a literal stone's throw from our theater and where I continued my quest for the sequel to Hooked. This was a very fun bookstore and gift shop run by volunteers with the Dayton Book Fair, a nonprofit organization that collects books year round and the proceeds from the store benefit local nonprofits. The books are all $1, which means that the majority of the proceeds come from the sale of their gifts, many of which are handmade by local artists, and the selection is humorous, whimsical, and eclectic. Highlights for me included their wide selection of pins and their amazing teapot collection. were just fun gifts, goofy pins or cute cards, earrings, chocolate bars, but many of my favorites were literary themed, like the Jane Austen series or the mugs covered in names of banned books. It was so much fun to browse through everything the shop had to offer and chat with the volunteers running the store, and I ended up visiting it all three days we were in Dayton. <music> So did I ever find the elusive sequel to Hooked? You'll find out in just a second, but first I'd like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Proven Skincare. If you've been here for any amount of time, you'll know that my skin is far from perfect. I struggle with rosacea, and yet I still make the decision to put my face on camera in front of thousands of eyes because that's just my reality. I'm incredibly busy and I never found a skincare regime that was both functional and simple enough to integrate into my daily routine. So when Proven reached out to me, I was definitely intrigued. They don't use a one size fits all approach. Instead, they create tailor-made skincare routines and this being a sewing channel, we love tailor-made. So I went on their website and completed the online skin quiz, which asked me about factors like my environment, my skin's history, and my personal skin concerns. And as I answered, I could see the specific ingredients that were being incorporated into my personalized three-step system, which includes a cleanser, a day moisturizer with SPF, and a night cream. This removes the guesswork about which products to use or when to use them, and makes it super easy to incorporate into my daily routine. I've been using Proven for a couple months now and already my skin feels healthier, more hydrated, and is noticeably less irritated. Now I know I'm not a beauty or health guru, I run a sewing channel, but I have struggled both with bad skin and with finding a skincare routine that fits into my schedule. So if that's you too, if you're looking for a simple and effective way to simplify your skincare routine, I recommend giving Proven a try. You can follow the link in the description and use the code SHANNONMIX to get your own personalized three-step skincare system for just $99. 
Thank you, Proven, for sponsoring this video. And now let's go see what I got in that cute little bookstore. So the real question is, was I successful in finding the sequel to Hooked? And the answer is unfortunately not. I finished the entire tour without getting my hands on a copy, but I have to say I'm not incredibly surprised because all I could find from here on out was used bookstores. And so obviously they don't carry a consistent stock. And I still had a ton of fun browsing around, poking through all these fun little bookstores. And this one especially had an amazing selection of of little like gifts and knickknacks, which I completely took advantage of for getting some small little Christmas gifts for my friends and family and also for our secret snowflake gift exchange. So the first thing, and I'll just run through them really quickly here. This is a fun little mug that I got for Phil because the very first day he accompanied me to the bookstore to look around and he saw this sitting there with its little bugs and he said that he thought it was really cute and fun. So I ended up getting that for him. I got a couple pairs of socks for friends and family. They were only $4 each for these really cute cotton socks. So they were perfect little stocking stuffers and very festive also, loving the color schemes. And then I only have one on hand because I gave all the other ones away, but there was an amazing selection of pins. This one is my all-time favorite, which I'm keeping, and it says, be the person that your dog thinks you are. So very fun. I will be attaching this onto a book bag or something like that. Uh, also got this fun little tarot card, which says the dog mom. Again, very on brand for me. Even their packaging was super adorable. So it all has, you know, rabbit hole books, Dayton on it. Branding, absolutely on point, very whimsical, very fun. When I bought the stuff, they asked me if I wanted to wrap it. They had like a wrapping station where you could wrap things for free. I don't know. It was just, it was a super fun experience. I really enjoyed it. If you're ever in the Dayton area, definitely check out Rabbit Hole Bookstore. Even though I didn't find the book I was looking for, I did walk away with two other books, one of which is Shady Characters, very fun about the history and origin of various unusual punctuation marks and other characters in, you know, writing. And then I also got one of the books in the Redwall series. I know they're two completely different ends of the spectrum, but I figured they would balance each other out very well. And I do love the Redwall series, used to read it as a kid, so I kind of have been bouncing back and forth. I am most of the way through the shady characters and really enjoying it so far. And then lastly, I did also get meet up with one of my patrons who handed me a lovely bunch of fabric to add to my community scraps project, which I'll just add to my collection of other fabric that people have given me throughout the tour. It was super fun to meet up with all of you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much to everyone who came out and also to those of you who wanted to come out but couldn't because your holiday plans got interrupted by COVID. I am so sorry, trust me, I feel your pain. and. Um, um, maybe next time. So thank you so, so much, everyone. Also, before we continue with the video and head to the next city, I know that some of you were quite concerned with my lack of posting in January, which was very, very sweet. Thank you so much for the concern, but it did remind me that I should probably manage expectations a little bit because I know that many of you have only found me in the past few months. So if you haven't been here very long, just to be clear, I've never had a super consistent upload schedule. Sometimes it'll be one video a month, other times it'll be four, and Vlogmas was very much an exception with three videos per week. So if I don't post a video for a week or two, that's very normal. It's just that it takes such a long time to physically make things, whether that's something I'm sewing or finishing a knitted project. And then it takes even longer to do the editing for the video. Usually it's about 24-ish hours just of editing to get the video together. So. Nothing's happened to me. I just don't have enough time in the day to get everything done. And I would encourage those of you that have an Instagram account to go follow me over there because I do post much more frequently over there. It's often in my daily stories. So you can get sneak peeks of what I'm up to, see what I'm working on, make sure I'm still alive. You can see cute corgi pics and videos. And for those of you that 
don't have Instagram, I often put up community posts if something comes up. So I did actually put one up saying that this final episode would be late. So I appreciate the concern, but I'm fine. I'm just very, very busy. And if you want more details on what exactly it was I was busy with, it's all up on my Patreon. So with that out of the way, let's head over to Lansing, Michigan. Hello friends, I'm coming to you this morning from East Lansing, Michigan, where I have the entire day off until the show tonight, which is a lovely feeling. We are finally slowing down a tiny bit. So I have some fun plans because I need to find some googly eyes. I have a prank in mind that involves the use of googly eyes. This is something that I enjoy doing on contract. I love to play fun, innocent little pranks on my castmates. And for this one, we're gonna need some googly eyes. So it is a lovely day outside albeit a bit brisk, so gonna dress up nice and warm and go explore the city, hopefully find some really fun shops and cross our fingers, some prank material. And then when we come back, maybe a little bit later before the show, if there's time, also get some work done on the crazy quilt stocking. So let's get all bundled up and go explore East Lansing. <laughs> Right away we found a Target, but it was small and the art section was tiny, so no googly eyes there, and we decided to continue our quest elsewhere. Along the way we found a really cute secondhand bookstore, and you know I had to stop in there trying to find Wendy Darling. Unfortunately, it had neither the book I was looking for, nor a resident cat, but I was very amused by the selection of highly specific genre subcategories. We were also on the lookout for some gifts for our show's secret snowman gift exchange, so a funky and eclectic novelty store caught my eye. I'm an absolute sucker for botanical prints, cute woodland animals, or anything with mushrooms on it, so this store was an absolute delight. Then it was just a short walk through campus back to the hotel. Okay, well it wasn't fully a success on the googly eye front. We did not find any, unfortunately, so I'll have to keep my eyes peeled for future stores down the road in which to uh, complete my quest. So stay tuned for the riveting saga of will Shannon find googly eyes and what is the prank she's planning on doing with them. But I did not come away empty handed because I did find some very cute artwork. I, first of all, I really enjoyed my time out in the city. It's a lovely city. It's so nice to be out in some crisp winter weather. I was melting in Florida. So I was thrilled about the cold weather and we were on campus. That was very cute. It is very much a university town, but there were some really super cute shops along the way. And one of them, I got some very fun artwork because the hotel that we're in has this absolutely amazing gallery wall in the first and second floor, like along this staircase. And I was super inspired by it. First of all, let me just say that this hotel has been so interesting and unique. We've really been staying in hotels that run the whole gamut in terms of aesthetic, the last time they were updated, the features they have, and this hotel is checking all of my boxes. It is so whimsical, just absolutely really enjoying the stay here and that gallery wall totally inspired me. So I got some artwork that I so that I can start my own gallery wall. Now, these are not meant to be artwork. They are in fact letters to send to somebody, but I'm not sending them to anybody. I'm sending them to myself because I love them. So 
The first one is by the artist of the name Paul Bond, who specializes in magical realism and like obviously, look at this, very whimsical, very beautiful. I love the image in and of itself, just like minus the touch of magical realism up here, which I thought was just super, super cute. And I really just love the way that he is playing with it. I love magical realism as a genre in, in literature, in art apparently as well. So that was a fun one. This is very much a standalone piece. I only got one by him. And then I got four by the next artist, who is Deidre Wicks. She is inspired by her love of animals, fashion, costume, old photographs, and tea. So is it any wonder that her artwork spoke to me? And just, just wait until you see. <laughs> <laughs> the the artwork that I got and I know that there's at least a couple of you out there that are gonna squee at this because it is a series of watercolor squirrels I just I love the squirrels I know some of you love the squirrels and who doesn't love a little anthropomorphic squirrels dressing them up here's like the hipster squirrel this is actually called sail rack sweater very cute and then black magic coffee so I thought that these were just super cute. They all go together. There's four of them. You know, it's a whole theme. Can make a whole little gallery wall of them just to remind me of this tour and the time here. And yeah, I'm gonna pause this segment for a brief little knitting interruption because if you've made it this far in the video, you've probably also watched the earlier episodes. And I think it was episode seven where I talk about finding this sweater that I'm wearing here, how I found it at a thrift store. And I also said this. If anybody knows what the name of this particular knit pattern is, please let me know in the comments because I really dig it and I would love to try to use it myself at some point. Well, I have to say so many of you jumped on the cause and dug around in knitting books, finding similar stitches and patterns, but there were a couple of you that absolutely took it to the next level. I had someone DM me asking for detailed photos of the sweater and then they worked with a friend to painstakingly recreate the exact pattern, which I'm very happy to report I've been given permission to share with everybody out there watching this who would like to do it for themselves. So here are some images from that viewer of the process of figuring out that stitch. Here it is all worked up and the instructions on how to knit this basic stitch pattern is up on my coffee account for free and it's over there just because that was the easiest, most consistent place for me to put a permanent free link to the PDF for download. So please help yourself to it, use it, make amazing things for it, but don't pay me for it. Instead, if you have money that you would like to throw at a small creator, go support the woman who actually helped create the pattern. She is making a reversible hat and cowl pattern using this stitch that she'll have for sale. And rumor is that she's calling it my circus, my monkeys in honor of, well, this whole situation. So I'll put all her information up on screen as well as in the description. Be sure to go give her some love and a massive, massive thank you to both of these lovely viewers for working together to make what was sort of an offhand, vague suggestion become an actual reality. Okay, back to Lansing. So that's where I'm at right now. It is almost three o'clock, so I think I'm going to grab lunch, make myself a little tea, get all of my fabric supplies, and go get some work done on my stocking and the crazy quilting. But I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to film any of it for you because word on the elevator is that some of our cast has gotten a jump start on the Christmas present for the cast, which is our stage manager went out and bought a Oculus Quest so that we can play Beat Saber on the VR for our Christmas party. But apparently some of the cast is pre pre-gaming in a very non-alcoholic sense. They're getting they're they're testing out the Beat Saber right now as we speak and in the very same spot that I was planning on going to sew. So I'm not sure if I'm going to film any of this for you, but I'll at least check in after the fact. So I'll catch up with you in the next scene.
Right. Well, obviously I did not film any of the actual crazy quilting that day or any of the following days, but I'm happy to report that I got a lot of work done. I now have four crazy quilted stockings that are well on the way to being done. Although as you will notice, they are not 100% done. First of all, because none of them, they're not sewn together. My camera battery died, but if we go back to the main point, uh, you can see they're not sewn together yet and that is because they're not entirely done like i do think there's more work that can be done on them but i also was like you know what i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush it the whole point of vlogmas was that i didn't have to finish projects perfectly in order to put out a video which let me tell you was very relieving and, and enjoyable so what i did was i got a good amount of work done on four individual separate um, pieces and I will continue work on them probably pull them out next holiday season and continue to work on them then at leisure and then I'll sew them together at some point some observations I did have one it was very tricky for me to only use Christmas colors so I've got red green some white silver and then I did end up adding in a little bit of like light tan and brown which did kind of go well with the gingerbread men that is also the only colors that I had on hand but I, I felt like it, it was what I wanted to put on a Christmas stocking I wanted Christmas colors on a Christmas stocking so that was an interesting limitation that I found myself chafing against a little bit they look fine in the end I'm not unhappy with how they turned out I just like made me be more creative with my stitches although the other thing I wanted to say is that in the end I did not actually try that many more new stitches because a lot of the time I was just like doing it on the bus or in a moment where I wanted to relax and not necessarily have the brain power to come up with new stitches so I would just glance at my bag my patchwork bag that I made and copy those stitches again which I'm completely happy with I have no problem with it I just thought it was funny I'll show you some of the new stitches that I did or made up here and I think they look quite nice. The other thing that I noticed is that I did not add nearly as many sequins into the embroidery as I was originally anticipating, but that was actually because our costumer gave me a bunch more scraps and a lot of them were sequined scraps or like this one here where it has some glitter in the fabric itself. You can tell that it's a, a spandex because it's like bubbling a little bit, not sitting perfectly flat, but that's fine. It just ended up being a bit too much sparkles between the, the the sequins and then the sparkles and then like if I would try to add in more sequins like I did here but like on stitches that already had sequins it just felt like a little bit too much. I love Christmas but I'm not necessarily a Christmas maximalist or a maximalist in any facet of my life so I think I struck a nice balance. I was really really enjoying working the rickrack in with the embroidery that was something i did not really do on the bag so i have to say i'm really satisfied with um how a lot of these rickrack patterns turned out i'll give you some close-ups here and also you'll notice that i did cut up my sampler from the chicken scratch apron and it is uh, spread out in a couple different places on here and so that was that was very fun to be able to add that in so all in all, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Found it very relaxing. Did not branch out as much as I would have liked, but I am totally fine with that. And I absolutely will be very excited to pick these back up next Christmas. I'll come back to it with renewed enthusiasm next year. Let me know how you enjoyed them. Do you find them? too much are they too much christmas for you do you think i struck a nice balance were you inspired to try any crazy quilting yourself this holiday season or even coming up this year i would absolutely recommend it i think there are just so many things that could be done with this and i find it so relaxing so let me know let me know your thoughts on the whole crazy quilt situation now to follow up on the riveting saga of the googly eyes because we are now rapidly approaching the final city of the tour i did end up finding some at walmart it was this big pack with a variety of sizes which was absolutely perfect for what i wanted to do with it so on the very last day of the contract i snuck into a couple people's dressing rooms and just had some fun
I do wish I could have done even more with these, but actually I very nearly got caught in the act as it was. So this was all I managed to film, although I will say that later on that same day, I did put several other pairs of eyes on various costumes and props and where it wouldn't endanger the performer, some pieces of equipment. And now seems like a good time also to elaborate on part of the reason why I didn't get this vlog out sooner, because it's also part of the reason that I had to wait till the very last day to apply these googly eyes. And it was because of a couple things. One of them was our last city where I had planned on filming a lot of the vlog. Well, not only were we all in these absolutely tiny hotel rooms with no natural light whatsoever, but more importantly, there was a wave of COVID that hit the cast and the crew and that just shook everything up. It canceled a lot of our holiday plans and it also added a unhealthy dose of tension into the cast on our last week with the tour. So I kind of just ruined any holiday spirit that I or everyone else in the cast was feeling. So I decided that rather than trying to film something then and sort of force it and not feel good about it, I decided to wait until I had better light and was in a better mood. So if you see people in masks in some of the later clips in this video, that's why we were all masking backstage to try and keep everyone healthy. I didn't get COVID. I was able to perform the entire run of shows, but it was still just not quite the ending to the tour that everyone was hoping for. On a more cheerful note, if I remember correctly, I had alluded to a little Christmas time gift exchange situation that might be happening, and now I think it's a good time to expand on the story. And I started filming this story earlier, but then I was rather abruptly cut off by housekeeping. So at some point you might notice the audio changes and I'll just be finishing the story up back here for you. So the first half of the story takes place all the way back in Savannah, where if you'll recall, we visited this very cute Riverside Market. And one of the things that I got there, which I didn't show on camera because I didn't think anything of it, was I got a Christmas present for one of our cast members. Now we've been spending a lot of time on tour with this other couple called Edgar and Gisela. They're from Spain. They're lovely. They're the aerialists, one of the aerialists in our show. And we've noticed that Edgar always has these super fun socks, which I really approve of. I also always have fun socks. Uh. And so when we were out and I saw this stand with this amazing selection of really fun socks, I was like, you know what? It could be kind of fun. These are just screaming Edgar let's see if we can find a pair that we can give him for Christmas so I as soon as I saw this pair I was like this is perfect I've got to get this for him and so the socks they're Christmas donuts but if you look here you can see on the bottom that they have a really fun message and you know being a circus artist our feet are very often off the ground so people can read this all the time i thought this was the perfect gift for edgar so we bought it and we went on our way fast forward to charleston the very next day and we're out with Edgar and Gisela visiting the city and we go into this shop which I didn't show on the vlog but I have some shots of it here and it was an ugly Christmas store and we were having fun looking around when all of a sudden Phil came up to me and he had this kind of funny look on his face and he asked me so what exactly did those socks look like that we got for Edgar? And I was like, well, you know, they were black and they had these Christmas colored donuts on them and they had this like fun message on the bottom and he was like, okay, we have, we have a problem, we have a situation because Edgar is over there looking at the display of socks and he literally has chosen the exact same pair of socks and he's about to purchase them. Now, fortunately, I had actually already mentioned to his wife, Gisela, that we had gotten him a pair of socks for Christmas. She already knew about them. So really quickly, I got Phil to like pull Gisela aside and I was like, you can't let him buy those socks. Those are the exact pair of socks that we just got him yesterday. So she was like, okay, okay. So she walked back over over to the stand and her and Phil were like, oh, but like, what about these socks? These are really fun socks too. And he was like, yeah, no, I like them, but I really like these socks. And he was very reluctant to let go of the donut socks. And so finally at some point, Gisela had to be like, Edgar, you can't buy these socks. And he was like, what? He was so confused. And she was like, no, just trust me on this one. Put 
that pair of socks down and get another pair of socks, please. Y you'll understand later. And he was like, okay. Okay, super, super confused. Ended up with another pair of very fun, like Santa, goofy Santa socks, left the store, and then probably forgot about the episode um, a couple days later until the very last day of the tour when we presented our pair of socks to Edgar and told him the story of what had happened. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, now no, 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 I understand everything. Like, <laughs> no, like no, everybody, no, 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 Like two, three days before. No. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, right. So when you start to look pair. at them and say, oh yeah, these are together. We're like, look, those Santa ones are nice exactly. too. <laughs> Oh my god. Right? Needless to say, he really enjoyed them, and now he has a funny story to go with them too. So next up, I had filmed one last vintage pattern of the day for you that never got aired. So we're gonna jump right over to that because there are some very fun and funky patterns. And then we're gonna come back for a little bit more knitting because I've actually got a question for all the more experienced knitters out there. So I've got two vintage patterns for everyone today. They both came from a basement church vintage sale in Montreal that my roommate suggested we go to. And I was so, so glad that she did because we had a really great time. Canel had a blast. It was a good time all around. And I came away with a couple really fun vintage patterns and from years that are definitely outside my wheelhouse, but super, super fun nonetheless. So this first one, it is from 1971. It cost me four dollars and it is this very fun McCall's pattern which if we're being honest I don't really need a pattern to make these skirts they're pretty simple skirts if we look at the pattern pieces back here they're mostly just rectangles but I did I was just intrigued by the art honestly I really enjoy the art on these patterns and the styling and you know if nothing else it's just inspiration for colors and patterns I definitely enjoy the ruffle at the bottom and this cute little corselet thing we've got going on here so very very fun also very reminiscent of the gunny sacks style that was super popular which I have replicated, aped in a very strange way in my Gunny Saxoween Cuban Pete from the mask mashup. Another fully recycled project that was super, super goofy. Now, like all of the previous patterns in the series, I have not actually opened this one up because it came in this envelope here and it was basically just purchase without examining the pattern. Again, it feels fairly hefty. So it looks like we've got a good wad of paper here which is always a good sign and it looks like it's it's either factory folded or somebody did a really good job of jamming these back in here so opening up the instructions they don't have a copy of the pattern art on here but the pattern instructions do look fairly detailed Interestingly enough, the instructions on here do not seem to be quite as comprehensive as some of the other ones we've looked at. So by 1971, apparently McCall's at least is getting rid of some of their detailed instructions, but they do go ahead and tell you to do things such as straightening the ends of your fabric, cutting it so it's nice and square, and also making sure that your grain is square. So they give you instructions to straighten the grain, which is kind of fun. And I've actually never seen that on instructions before. And then they also do include a list of sewing terms here, which is kind of fun and fairly comprehensive. It runs the whole length of the pattern instructions. They do have some very cute little drawings on the back side here, like that one. Very cute, very detailed, but all in all, I would say not quite as detailed as some of the other patterns we've looked at. It is a skirt, so admittedly skirts are much easier to sew than some of the other garments in the series. So there's that. Let's take a look at the pattern pieces. 
So upon closer examination, these pattern pieces have been used. They have been cut out. The I can tell that the, the notches, they have been used, but somebody has taken great care to fold them back up, which again, gives me a lot of hope that all of the pieces are here. And also because again, it is a very hefty wad here. And then we've got another a wad over here, a little bit thinner, but still it looks like these are actually uncut. So these are the ones that did not get used. These are the ones that did get used. And again, because it's a skirt, if there's something missing, should be fairly simple to just make it up. So feeling quite happy about that one and just completely loving the color scheme. It would be kind of fun to try and replicate one of these outfits in its entirety, color scheme and all. So yep, yeah, there you go. McCall's 2720 from 1971. <laughs> the, the trick, of course, now is going to be getting these all back in the envelopes in as good a shape as I found them. Another thing I'm really enjoying is when they come with the stamp of the store that they were originally sold at. So this one has a stamp with the, the name of the store and the city that it came from. So that's kind of fun. And I do occasionally see these, especially in Canada. I don't know if this is as much of a thing in the US, but I think there's one over on, on this one too? No, there's not one on this one, but the some of the other ones that I found at thrift stores have these stamps on them and it's always kind of fun to see their, their provenance. There's pattern number one. And pattern number two is a simplicity pattern from 1977, also costing me $4. And this one is this super fun, like caftan top thing we've got going on here. I bought it because I particularly love this view right here with the sort of V waistline. And I think I might actually try to combine this bottom edge here with the V neck and the little diamond in the middle from this one. So we're gonna be combining a couple views here, which is gonna be super fun. Size 14, which, I haven't even looked if this is my size. Size 14 corresponds to a bust 36, so that's gonna be right on par for me. A tiny bit big, but not too bad. So definitely looking forward to this one because I think it's gonna be a super comfortable one. I'm actually really looking forward to making this, which means that let's, let's hope that they're actually in here because I haven't opened these yet. Pulling out again a wad of papers, which looks quite promising. Although they do look like they're cut out already. So let's see, they're definitely not factory folded. They have been used and wedged back in here is my belief. Yep, definitely already used because somebody has cut them out and cut off the second half of the little triangle that's supposed to be on there. So they have already been used, but there is a hefty wad of them. So I am hoping that all of the pieces are in here. And again, if they're not, I feel pretty confident in my ability to just make it up. But, oh, we've got, that's fun. Two patterns, one in French, one in English. We'll go with the English one for your benefit. So again, cutting and sewing directions. They've got some cutting layouts here on the bottom. They do give you some basic instructions on how to use your simplicity pattern. Read first, then sew. I mean, honestly, whoever actually does, but they tell you to prepare your pattern, doing things such as pressing the pattern pieces, not trimming away the margins. They tell you how to lengthen and shorten it. And then they explain what the pattern markings mean, the arrows for the grain, the fold line, all the notches and stuff. And then they also tell you a little bit about the fabric, the cutting layout, the suggested cutting layouts that they have down here. And then they tell you step four is mark and sew. And they suggest marking with a tracing wheel and dressmakers, tracing paper, chalk, or Taylor's tax. So we're still in the era in 1977 when that's pretty common practice to use chalk or Taylor's tax, which is kind of fun. Did not know that. Then they have all of the cutting instructions on the page two here. 
with some nice color coordination so that you can tell what's the right side and what's the wrong side. And again, this looks like a very fun pattern. Should be a fairly simple sew and a very comfortable end result. So of all the patterns that I have in this series, this is definitely one of the ones that I am really looking forward to actually making up because I think it's gonna get a lot of use in my wardrobe. So that'll do it for this vintage pattern of the day. Which of the two was your favorite? Would you be making up the skirt or would you be making up the caftan or both? I don't know. They're both very cute patterns. Really digging it. Loving the options for mixing and matching the styles in this one over here. So that was the end of the tour for me. And while January marks a general winding down of things for many people, it's actually when stuff really started ramping up for me personally, because we were invited to go to Budapest for an prestigious international circus festival where we got to compete alongside some of the best acts in the world. And there are plenty more details in my monthly Patreon vlog, but I will say that it was an absolute whirlwind. I did get lots of knitting done. So the next video up on the channel might have to be making those knitting bags that I teased maybe a couple months ago because this is what I've been carrying my knitting around in for the past three weeks. That might be my last strictly crafting video for a little while though because I have an absolutely massive project that I'm about to embark on. I'm so excited to introduce it to you, but there will definitely be a few changes around here. And I think, think that's all I'm going to say on that. If you're a patron, you already know, but the rest of you are just going to have to hold on to your socks because it is going to be a wild ride and I hope you all love it. But for now, sticking on topic, all you knitters out there, please, can you help me out with something? Because as you know, I've got this sweater here that I was working on for much of my vlogmas and I've got the rest of the yarn waiting for me back in Montreal so that I can finish it, but I do foresee a potential issue. So what I'm wondering about is color bleed because as you can see, these are two very, very different colors. We've got the dark blue over here. We've got the light tannish gray on top and I did notice that when I was blocking out my swatch which was in the dark blue I rolled it to dry as you saw in the video on a white towel and I did notice uh, much to my chagrin for the hotel itself that the blue did bleed a fair amount and I think this is not unusual like I know that yarn does bleed but my question is how do I wash this so that the blue doesn't bleed onto the white? Because I do potentially see that being an issue. Like, is that a thing? Can the blue bleed into the white? And if so, is there a way that I can prevent that from happening? I've been trying to brainstorm, like, is it possible to soak just the blue half and, you know, not wring it out, but, you know, stamp it out a couple times until the water runs clear and then I can soak and block the whole thing. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. I thought I would ask because I know that there are many more, much more experienced knitters than me out there. So I have all this stuff to block it. I'm just hesitant to do so until I figure out if there's gonna be substantial color bleed or is it just something I can't avoid? Do I have to accept that there's going to be some color bleed? And if so, say la vie. Just let me know about that. Cannot wait to hear um, the answers in the comments. So then with that question, hopefully soon to be solved, we have one last thing, and that is that I have an absolute mountain of letters and packages from everyone who donated fabric scraps to my community patchwork project. And I just wanted to say thank you all so, so much. Some of you have asked for an unboxing video and I'm not sure if that's going to happen because I feel like it's going to take minimum two hours to open all of this. And I don't think there's that many of you who would really sit through that long of a video, but I did at least want to say that I am super grateful. The concept was a massive success, which I was definitely worried about. And now I just need to brainstorm what I'm going to make with all of it. Obviously some sort of patchwork something, but 
what? It'll probably have to be a few different things just based on the quantity of scraps that I've gotten. So if you've got any brilliant ideas on what to do with them, let me know. And just know that even if I don't choose exactly your idea, you'd be really surprised how much just the vague suggestion of something can really spark an idea and jumpstart the brainstorming process. So throw all of those comments down below for me to um, marinate on. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this last montage and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Kenna. Hey, Mama. Oh. 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 Oh.